Happy Friday and welcome back to the weekly recap. And I've got a co-host today. Uh, Chris, everyone knows him from the community, but uh, how are you doing today, Chris? And, and take a moment to introduce yourself. We're a service provider currently. Um, I deal with Veeam, data protect stuff, infrastructure, you name it, I do it. That's right. I've known you for a long time and, you know, uh, I'm in central Ohio. You're just up in uh, Ontario. Man, we were at 36 Celsius today. We're, we record earlier now, uh, but is it, it's been hot up there for you, I take it as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's We're getting the hot. We're getting the rain, so it's humid as everything. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we we uh, this morning, like the whole windows were like dewed up because it, it yep. barely got under. Um, it was under 30 overnight, but the hot night with all that humidity, it's nasty. So it's supposed to rain and cool it off. But for those of you in this big heat wave, hope you all take care. It's actually a funny story. There's a lot of power outages here in central Ohio. So a lot of people came into the office because we have air conditioning and good internet and a place to work. And I'm like, guys, guys, I, I keep it quiet. I like it here this way. <laughs> no, it's nice to see a lot of people. Okay. All right, so let's get into it. We had a busy week and uh, Chris, you're the first one with me in the new format. We're breaking the rule. So um, this ceremonious uh, rule break, so. All right. All right, so let's start with uh, <laughs> over in cybersecurity space, Link State uh, talked about you know, um, using exchange servers to deploy the black cat ransomware. And, you know, uh, Chris, I know in your professional practice, the security stuff comes up every day. But uh, any comments on, you know, using exchange to deploy uh, ransomware or, or really anything else that goes along with that? Uh, just it's it seems that exchange is picking up now with ransomware. It's just lately over the last little while, it's been all I've seen is exchange stuff. So it's like, luckily where we are, we use Office 365. So it's done differently than on-premise exchange, but I feel I feel kind of bad for the people that still have to manage exchange and all that kind of stuff. They have to keep patching. Well, and that's, that's the practical point, keep patching, right? That burden doesn't go away and uh, for, you know, on-premises software for sure. Yep. And, you know, then pivot the other way. I think that Microsoft 365 is a very attractive platform. There's a lot of AI-based protections and things like that that go into the service, but um, always be patching, right? That doesn't really roll off the tongue, but that's yep. <laughs> kind of the, the practical thing. And just saw alert come through on uh, the Newswire about, um, something around volume shadow copy service with an update may interfere break uh, backups, but I'll see if it, it interacts with the uh, Veeam agent. I'll, I'll find out tomorrow on this system. Actually, heck, I'll probably just run a backup after this episode. But uh, yeah, so thank you, Link State, for sharing. And then, oh, what, what, what? who's this guy? What? Who's that? <laughs> so uh, you made the cut, uh, Chris. The total coincidence, everyone. But uh, tell us about this post and, and your recap here. Uh, basically, so I copied this off of my blog that I do. Um, it's basically a recap. I was at Vimon this year. Um, it was great to be able to talk to people again in person and all that kind of stuff. And I attended many of the sessions that were there. A lot of the V12 stuff, also the V, the V, the service provider stuff as well. Uh, only because we're a service provider, so I wanted to see what's coming for BCC. Um, and I just decided to go through and list out a lot of the features in the different areas and categories that were coming that are really of interest to me. Yeah, and actually, I tell you what, man, you actually did a really good way of running through this list. Really appreciate that. And uh, did you have a favorite session? Just curious. Um, I, I have a suspicion which one it may have been, but uh, I think the one with the V mover. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that, exactly that, it. That, that, that was the one. Uh, it was just like, oh. We have to deal with um, rebalancing sobers constantly at where we are. Storage is such a problem. And now with this, it's going to help us. We need an outage window, but at least we can kind of get around it now. So. Yeah, this rebalancing and then the mover that goes with it. I mean, these are really capabilities driven a lot off feedback. And there's, it sounds crazy, but like, it's like Veeam backups are so portable that, oh, I don't want to do this with them. I want to put them here. I want to move them here. Now, now we can. So this will be very highly anticipated. So thank you, Chris, for sharing that one. Not a problem. So Wolfgang, this isn't quite a quick tip, but speaking of V12, you know, again, right fresh after v, uh, Veeam on, uh, want to talk about the best practice analyzer within the, con uh, the console. So 
Um, I'll zoom in here maybe a little bit so people can see kind of like you click this button. And I think this is a, a nice little dashboard of information. I mean, this is a really good assessment to kind of see how people have implemented implemented Veeam. And, you know, it might not be that everybody gets a green check, but I think this is a good starting point, Chris. Absolutely. Um, to me, it's, we always say follow best practices. What better way than to run the analyzer right from within the console? And if I know Veeam, which I've, this is my 12th year, I finally just figured out Veeam, you're going to see this grow, right? This is the start. We're going to, you yep. know, of course, add more capabilities in here or, or at least logic in here. But I can tell you this was also, this aligns very well to a feature request that was processed a number of times to actually throw an alarm if a worst practice was followed. Right. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, nice. now, yeah. And so this was like really driven off of feedback. Now, the next thing I'm wanting to do is have these as hot links to click into the user guide of how to set it up. All right. So, yes, this is just kind of where, because if you think about context sense or context, you know, specific help, that's the type of thing that I want to highlight. So, thanks. Uh, thanks, Wolfgang. This is a good one. Um, keep those V12 nuggets coming because uh, we're building the drum roll. We're in V12 beta 2 right now so good stuff all right so pivoting a little bit this is part special department part interesting post and you know there's some necessary changes that are coming down the pike in the microsoft 365 space so uh we have a good write-up here from regnor who by the way now works at veeam fabian thank you for that and it really drives around uh what would be partly special department this uh, special department news, the graph API export for Microsoft Teams. So we're giving the market a heads up. This is a change that's coming here, but basically once we release 6A, and it's fair to say that that's going to be next month, so July of 2022, this is going to change how um, Veeam backup for Microsoft 365 is able to get data for Teams backups. And it really comes down to this one right here, you know, planned deprecation of this, which is part of the engine we use. And so uh, Fabian does a great job of kind of highlighting, you know, some FAQ that comes around here. And then, you know, some of the practitioners have jumped in as well. But uh, Chris, I know, you know, part of your practice involves Microsoft 365 backup as well, but anything kind of stick out here or any any opinions or thoughts? Uh, well, I've actually passed this on. We write our own um, portal for Office 365 backup. So I've passed this on to the, the development team that actually does that so that they can take a look at this and get ahead of the curve when it drops and what's gonna change and all those kinds of things, so. Yeah, it's funny because um, at Microsoft Build, which is like their developer conference last year, in fact, even Anton Gostev caught this and kind of forecasted that there might be some changes here, right? So. From our perspective here at Veeam, we're not really surprised. And this is honestly the, the nature of software as a service. It's a dynamic area. The, the APIs and the plumbing are changing. In fact, I'll go one step further. A lot of times we don't even have the APIs and the plumbing to do some of the things that we need for backup. So this is an area, the good news is it didn't just drop overnight. We, we know that this change is coming through October. So definitely a heads up here. I mean, once 6A drops uh, or becomes available, let's just say next month, um, you know, some people might be in the wait and see department. Some people might be those early adopters, but we'll have some KBs associated with the updates. But uh, for those of you that are using Microsoft 365 and like you've done, Chris, pass this on to your teams, give the KB a write or a read here, and then give uh, also Fabian's extra comments here. And thank you so much for writing this up, uh, Regnor. That's a really good way to start and get ahead of the curve for this. So good stuff, good stuff. All right, Chris, I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. We're gonna do we're gonna do the who's new and 83. This is actually quickly becoming a lot more work than I thought to, <laughs> to welcome everybody into uh, the Veeam community. And so we do record on Wednesdays or such. And since the last recording I did with Maddie, there are plus 83 members in the Veeam community. We're getting close to 13K. Um, and it's funny because we skimmed through this and I'm always wanting to find the most interesting username. And, and we graduate we gravitated to the same one. So 
Uh, go ahead, Chris. Tell us who's the most interesting username here today. I, I, I'm I'm looking right at the left column, second last junkie footwear. Junkie footwear, you win. Most interesting <laughs> username uh, for this uh, this. Uh, class or this inducted group of new users in the Veeam community. So welcome everyone. Um, I'm going to try to mention all 83 in one post. Uh, it does look spammy, I know, but it is a way to just engage with everyone as they come in here. So big welcome to everyone. So, all right, Chris. Well, hey, thank you so much for joining me here on the recap. Any kind of closing Absolutely. thoughts here today? No, just keep engaging. If you have questions, ask them on the forum and just get with the community. And you mentioned uh, your blog. I guess let's go ahead and drop that URL. What's uh, where can we find your blog? Uh, it's at just dash virtualization dot tech. T -E -C -H. That's it. That's it. I was I knew it was just virtualization, and I'm like, it's not a dot ca. It's not a no, dot com. No. Oh. No, when I, I purchased it when they had a special on for the duck tech domain. So there you like go. 10, 10 years or something like that I have it for. So <laughs> the the proverbial land grab, kind of like yeah. how I moved to this new office. It's twice as big, so I moved down here because no one else is using it. So there, there you go. Awesome. Thanks again for being with me today in the recap, Chris. Not a problem. Thank you, Rick. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.